Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just pray to you. Lord, we pray, Jesus, that you would uh, be with us here this morning, that your spirit would be here, Holy Spirit, that you would be our teacher, Lord, that you would be our comforter, that you'd be our convictor, that you would uh, just be with us here this morning and help us to go through your word and understand and apply it to our lives where it's supposed to be and and just to understand you better and to to be closer to you and feel closer to you so lord we just thank you for the opportunity to have your word and to read it in jesus name amen so we are in the book of acts acts chapter 21 so if you got your bible open up there and uh, I'm going to need a volunteer. I may need a couple of volunteers. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen here. We, we may read a whole lot or we may read just a little. Um, so you're at 21. Do I have a volunteer? Okay, Julia. Nice and loud. Really loud. All right. I know you can. But I want you to know that your loud has to be loud, loud, not. <coughs> right. So, we're just hitting all these ports. He's, he's like on a cruise, going from one place to another. But he's not at the place where he's going yet. But we're getting there. Go ahead. Okay, so you, you got to catch what's going on here. Um, Paul is heading to Jerusalem. And people are coming to him and going, the Spirit's telling me you don't need to go there. You're going you're gonna to find a whole lot of trouble there. Don't go there. And so in different sections here, whether we'll hit all of them, People keep coming to Paul going, something bad's going to happen to you if you go there. Don't go. And so God is telling him, this is where you're going. And I want us all to think back when, when Paul first got saved. He had, he had been a Pharisee, he had following God, trying to do everything that God told him to do. And then God knocked him off his horse, struck him blind, he fasted for three days, and then, oh, I finally understand you, Jesus. I get it. It's all about you. It's not about all the rules and this and that and whatever. It's about my relationship with you. And so in that, the guy was going to pray for Paul, and, and the guy's like, Lord, don't make me go. He's killing people. He's, he's jailing people. And God says to this guy named Agabus, he says, I must show this man how much he will suffer in my name. Remember, that's how Paul's relationship with Jesus started. The man who heals him tells him, God told me you're going to suffer. So, that's in his mindset. He knows that's going to happen. 
That's not surprising to him. Other people are going, no, no, don't, you're going to get, there's going to be problems. Don't do that. Don't do that. And he's pretty much like Jesus going, get behind me, Satan. I don't care what happens. This is what God has for me to do. So he's going to Jerusalem and he's heading that way. And he's kneeling down and praying with these families as he's getting ready to go. <clears throat> and they're crying. Just imagine that. They're crying and they're weeping and they're, they're not going to see him anymore. And they're upset. <clears throat> and he's like, I got to go. This is what I got to do. His, his head is like flint. He is headed in that direction. That's what he's supposed to do and that's what he's going to do. So, Julia, continue on from there. Okay, sometimes we've got to have context. Can somebody tell me what in the world the seven was? This isn't an, an Avenger group, a Marvel, whatever. No, th this is a group of people. Somebody tell me what the seven was. No, what, what this specific group of seven was that Philip was a part of. Put your thinking caps on to the back to the beginning of the book of Acts. Nope. He was one of the people. The church is having some problems. The church has been started. They're having difficulty. And one group isn't, their widows aren't being fed. And people are complaining. And the church decides, we're going to get seven guys full of the Holy Spirit. And they're going to be our deacons. And they're going to serve. And they're going to work. And they're going to do whatever God has for them to do. He is one of those people. He is one of those original seven that, that God picked out to be the deacons of the church. So how many kids does he have, or how many does it tell us about? Um, he had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. Okay, he had four unmarried daughters that prophesied. That's telling us, reminding us again, back at the beginning of Acts. Most people thought of men as the only one who prophesied. And it quotes Joel and it says your sons and your daughters will prophesy. God's just making a, a promise. He, he's fulfilling the promise that he had made. So, so Philip, the evangelist, one of the seven, he had four unmarried daughters and these unmarried daughters were speaking the words of God to people, which is pretty awesome. Verse 10. While they were staying for many days, a prophetess named Agabus, Agabus came down from Judah. And coming to us, he took Paul's belt and bound his feet and hands and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, This is how the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who owns his belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Okay. Okay, go ahead, just read the next verse. When we heard this, we and the people urged him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What are you doing, weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be in prison, but even to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And since he would not be persuaded, he ceased and said, Let the will of the Lord be done. Okay, do you get what's going on? Some people would say, well, the Holy Spirit's talking to these people and they're saying one thing and Paul's here in the Holy Spirit and he's saying something different. Do you, do you see that? One group saying, Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. Don't go. Paul goes, I have to. They're going, don't go. And they're begging him in tears, don't go. And then Paul says, the Holy Spirit is pointing me in this direction. This is where I'm going. And so then Agabus comes and he gets all wrapped up in the belt and says, this is how they're going to treat you. So is the Holy Spirit saying the same thing to all the people? Yeah. He's saying, he's saying the exact same thing. 
but people are reacting differently. They don't want to see Paul all wrapped up and taken in chains. So they're going, well, that's not God's will. We got a warning. But it was God's will. Sometimes God's will takes things we don't want and we don't like. But that doesn't mean it's not his will. And it doesn't mean that he's not going to use that to do something great. And people um, didn't want to see Jesus harmed. That's, that was what happened with Peter. And he's saying something to Jesus, and Jesus says, Get behind me, Satan. You have what's in mind for man. I have in what's mine in the mind of God. And so sometimes difficult times come. Difficulty comes. That doesn't mean that God's not in it. You can go throughout the Bible and find places where things are difficult. Things are hard. But God is still at work. So, um, we're at a spot. It's only 15 after 11. So we're going to dive into the next section. Which is Paul making it to Jerusalem. And from here, it, this, is, this has been the, the pinnacle. Paul has done his three missionary journeys. He's went everywhere. Now, it's the scary ride to the bottom. He's taken prisoner. He's moved from place to place. And he speaks to one king. And he speaks to a governor. And then another king. And then they leave him in a dungeon for two years. And then he talks to the next person in charge. And so all that happens after this point. We can go from chapter 21 to the end of the book of Acts. As far as I'm concerned today, we can read to the end of it. And we'll just be telling the rest of the story. That this, is, this is the end. This is the beginning of the end. The only thing left is Paul is going to prison Paul is staying there. He's going to write letters while he's in prison. And then he's going to die. So, we'll get started here. We'll see how far we go. Verse 15. Julia. So, Paul is regaling them with his missionary journey. He's telling them everything. This thing happened in this place, and then this group got saved here. And you have people who'd never heard of, of uh, the Holy Spirit, and then they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And so he's just telling them all these stories. So, remember where he's speaking. Where is he speaking? What town? Jerusalem. What has happened? In Jerusalem. They chased out all the Christians. They started killing people. They killed James. Who was the head of the church at the beginning. They behead him. Peter is scared. He runs to another area. All these different ones. Run in different directions. And if you remember back. A long time ago. I had a picture. And it showed kind of the explosion. It was. Here's the church. Everybody's in Jerusalem. But then everybody sent out in all different directions. I believe there was 13 different countries that they all went to. And they shared the truth of Jesus. They were there because they were ran out of Jerusalem. And so they're there telling all the truth. Now Paul is coming back to Jerusalem. The people that want to kill the Christians are still there. you got to remember that. They're still there. So things will turn 
real quick. And it's like, what is it? People, they have that meme. Well, that escalated quickly. You go from something small to something drastic. That's where we're at. Go ahead. And they said, Okay, so here's the spot. They're in. He's in the spot. Okay, our, our, our little synagogue here, all these people have left our religion and they're going into this Christianity. But look back when Jesus was riding to town on the donkey. He was coming in as the king. What are the Jews at the temple whispering to each other. They wanted to kill him. Look at this man. He's turning everything upside down. Then later they say the same thing about the disciples. They don't like what's going on. These Jewish people do not like what's going on. They don't want to hear about this rabbi who we had killed is alive again. And this dude who's speaking saw him. And, and Jesus spoke to him. So these people don't want to hear what he's sharing. It, it, notice what it said there. Um, you see, brother, how many thousands of Jews have believed. They've left Judaism, have become Christians. And all of them are zealous for the law. They're zealous for the rules and regulations and do this and don't do that. That's the reason they didn't like Jesus. Jesus healed people on the Sabbath. The rule was more important than the people. You get that? That's why they're so mad. The rule was more important than the people. But from God's point of view, he loves the people. And the rules were there not to constrain them, but to protect them. And they misunder the the Jews misunderstood the rules. So, we're going to hit a section here and truthfully until this time, I never thought a thing about it. I, I never thought Paul was taking someone to the temple and they were going to do a sacrifice. Why, is, why in the world is Paul who talks about this kind of stuff and says, we've got Jesus. Jesus is the answer for all this. Why in the world is he doing a sacrifice? He's killing something. And what he's doing, he's trying to be all things to all people. He's trying to get people, okay, let's just get along. I, I'm, I'm going to play your game a little bit. If you, you don't have to be circumcised. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. I'm going to play your game a little bit. These guys are, are choosing to follow a Nazarite. That's what we're going to get to in a second. They're taking Nazarite, Nazaretic vows. And I'm going to pay for the, the doves and whatever is going to have to be killed. I'm doing this to play along in your game. For one reason. Because I want you to know Jesus. Julia had a question. Well, I, the, a, a simpler way to state it is, you know, here in America, we can see a lot of different cultures that come together. And so if, you know, I'm American, but I might meet somebody who's African or Mexican, and they have a culture that they're bringing with that. And so if I have a friend who's practicing Jew, I probably shouldn't 
Right. But, this, this is a sticky situation. Um, you look on the internet today, and people will explain, see, Paul was following the law. He was making these sacrifices. Yeah, he says at a different time that Jesus takes all of his, is that sacrifice. But here, he's following these traditions. And so should you. That's what you need to do with your life. You need to follow these things. And it's only been within the last 10 years that this kind of thinking is coming back and has even come in to hear and right. split the church. Yep. It has come in and split the church. And so you can have these thoughts and still be loved and accepted. But there's sometimes people go, no, this is the way you do it. And this is the way you have to do it. So we're going to see how much they ramp that in, in our t today's political things. They ramp up the rhetoric. Read, Julia. Do therefore what we tell you. We have four men who are under a vow. Take these men and purify yourself along with them and pay their expenses so that they may shave their heads. Thus all will know that there is nothing in you, nothing in what they have been told about you, but that you yourself also live in observance of the law. But as So this was all from Acts chapter 15. And so what they're doing is they're showing there's a difference. There are Christians and there are Jews who have accepted Christ. And then there's just plain Jews over here. So you Jews who have accepted Christ, you can continue and do some of this. But it doesn't save you. If you're a new Christian and you're from another culture, you don't have to do all these old things. You, you do not have to. They were only pointing forward to Jesus. Jesus is the realization of all these things. It says in another place that these things were just shadows of what was to come. And me and Jeff were talking this week and talking about shadows. Is there any substance to a shadow? No. Can you grab a hold of a shadow? No, no you can't. They're, they're from something that's real, and they're just a darkened area because the light's not coming through. So these things, these rules, these feasts, these Sabbaths, these new moon celebrations, all these things were shadows of what was to come, which was Jesus. So <clears throat> he separated the Jews, or, or the the Jews and the Christians and those who are coming to believe that we're Jews. The Gentiles do not have to follow the law. We, I mean, I started in the faith 20-some years ago. No one ever told me you needed to follow these things because those things were left in the past, because they were shadows. We have the truth. We have Jesus. So, we're going to get to a point where I said a second ago, things are going to turn ugly quick. Keep, keep going and stop me from talking. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, the NIV goes, the whole city was aroused and people came running from all directions. The whole city is ticked off at Paul and they think Paul should be punished. Why? Because he's going against their rules. This is embedded into churches. That's not the way we do it here. There's traditions that people have done. Well, why do you do it that way? Because that's the way our church does it. And they forget about the word. They forget about Jesus. And they say, this is how we serve God. This is how we worship God. This is how we've done it for 100 years, 2,000 years, however. And we're right because... Otherwise, our father's wrong, and grandfather, and great, great, and great, 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 great. They had to be wrong if they're not doing it right. So we have to continue this way. And people get so stuck in those things, there's no room for a relationship with Jesus. Where you read his word, and you find the truth, and you follow that truth. I, I was, people tried to convince me not to get baptized because I was baptized as an infant. I said, I read the word and it says I believe I should then get baptized. But people had a tradition and they wanted to convince me of their tradition instead of allowing me to follow Jesus. So that happens in so many different ways. And now these people are angry and upset. Continue on, ma'am. Okay, verse 34 said, Some of the crowd shouted one thing and some another, since the commander could not get the truth because of the uproar. <clears throat> Does this look anything like our modern society? Yeah. You, it, you watch a couple of years ago when we were having all the riots and all this kind of stuff. They would go out, a reporter would go out and say, Well, why are you doing this? And a person would say one thing. And then they'd talk to another person, and they'd say a different reason. And then they'd talk to another person. They don't know why they're doing what they're doing. These Jews did not know. They couldn't explain to you why. Why are they doing this? Because they were messing with the rules. You're messing with my religion. You're changing it. They're not changing it. Jesus changed it. Jesus sat down at the Passover and said, let me teach you a new thing. This is what it was all pointing to. I'm the lamb. They put the blood of the lamb over the doorpost. I'm that lamb. Put that blood on you and that's what saves you. So these people are getting all upset, but they don't know what they're all upset about. They just, you can't have a differing opinion than that's how our society does it. And that's what's going on here. You can't have a differing opinion. You must follow the narrative. You must believe the way we tell you to believe. And they're willing, we'll find out, to kill for it. Go ahead.
Amelia. Okay, so Paul just, he tells them, hey, I used to be just like you. I was having people killed, I was having people in prison, I, but they didn't want to listen to it. They said, this is the way we do it, and you can't change it. Um, so we'll hear next week, there's a group of people that say, we're not going to eat again until we've killed Paul. That is a loving religion, right? That is sharing the love of Jesus. I'm not going to eat again until I murder this person who's coming in the name of Jesus. Wow. That's, that's where this zealousness has gotten them to the point they're willing to murder to keep people in line. So, <clears throat> that'll be next week. That'll be uh, chapter 23, I think. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for our word. Lord, I thank you for opening it up and, and helping me to see things I hadn't even thought about before because of situations we've been in. 
And so, Lord, we know, Jesus, you came here to, to live a perfect life because we were incapable of it. Doesn't mean we're not supposed to aim at it, but when we fall, when we do sin, you help us, you forgive us. So, Lord, we just thank you and just pray that you would continue to work in us and draw us close to you. In Jesus' name, amen.